Hello everyone and a warm welcome to a new episode of Inspire Africa. I am Jerry Fusaya Bambi. Coming up on this episode, the Urban Sea Mobile Home Project in Ghana that wants to make home ownership affordable, eco-friendly and movable. The biomedical engineer turned cartoonist with a passion for Togolese and African stories. Plus, Kenya's Peter Tabichi, the 2019 Global Teachers Prize winner, has just been named again the world's best teacher. This is Inspire Africa. We start off in Ghana. Now, have you ever imagined relocating to another community with your house and belongings all intact? Well, Emmanuel Brown and his team in Accra wants to make this easily available and common. Let's take a look. The 2021 Population and Housing Census projected Ghana's housing deficit above 1.8 million. Additionally, the increasing cost of a parcel of land denies low-income earners the opportunity to own a house. This is what inspired Urban C, a group led by German-based Ghanaian Emmanuel Brown, to find an alternative solution, the idea of mobile homes. If I live in Kumasi, like a different city, and I want to travel to the other city, all it takes is a few uh, transporting costs and I move my whole house to a different location. Basically that's the concept and that's what I love about it. Brown believes his group's project could make the affordable housing situation in Ghana more practical. His current mobile home serves as a hotel at the Laboma Beach in Accra. This is the color of the wood. So this, all this has to be sample fed. It's not just by using your hands because you want to have the natural color, wood color. But is this a viable option for housing? This expert shares some insight. It save times, you know, for construction. And also you may not try to um, push a lot of carbon foot footprint into the atmosphere as well. It is eco-friendly. If you want to site a prefab uh, a building along the coast, then you are using metal steel as a, as a material for construction then you should know that the impact of the coastline on such a material should be something that you have to look at for. What it means is that you can use the same material, but at the same time you have to improve upon your maintenance uh, uh, activities. Emmanuel Brown is optimistic. And we're trying to build about 20 to 40 on this location. Um, when we are done here, I'm considering to take other locations as well and then expand. Brown and his group say the eco-friendly project can benefit Ghana if used as tourism infrastructure. And from Ghana, we now move to neighboring Togo, where an artist by the name Kanad is making waves with his comics and illustration of children's books. Adria Folinos Ron, aka Kanad, studied biomedical engineering, the application of principles and design concepts to medicine and biology for healthcare. Today he is, however, in the art of comic, but he finds himself applying design concepts. After years of perfecting his skills, Kanad has become the Togolese with the greatest number of titles as a cartoonist and illustrator of children's book of patriotism and history. We realized that there was a lot of demand for books, for comics in the black community. They want heroes to look like them, characters that evolve in the universe in which they find themselves. From the likes of Somto Ajulo Chupu of Vortex Corp to Cameroon's Clay Edu, Kanad in Togo is part of a growing list of African illustrators and animators telling stories with black characters. The reaction that I have most often encountered is, finally, something that resembles us and in which I find myself. They say that it's true that I buy a lot of Marvels to my children, but I also want to buy them comics with black characters. In Lome, Togo's capital, the cartoonist's impact is being felt even amongst those he mentors. He is someone that we've known since we were in middle school. We saw his comics, we were crazy about what he was doing. When I heard I could work with him, I said this is something we shouldn't miss. The next younger generation can be inspired by comic book authors like Kanat or more globally by Hago Media. Togolese comics are starting to make a name for themselves beyond the borders of the continent. 
Kanan's comic books mainly include themes that exposes readers to history such as ancient techniques of ironworking among bazaar in the north of Togo. Others include themes that teach children patriotism. Kanan says the passion to create an imaginary world specific to Africa with comics keeps him going. Now, most people can look back on their school days and remember one teacher who really inspired them. For many at the Keriko Secondary School in Nakuru, Kenya, it was this man. I'm immensely proud of my students. We lack facilities that many schools take for granted. So as a teacher, I just want to have a positive impact, not only in my country, even the whole of Africa. We have the pleasure of welcoming to Inspire Africa, Peter Tabichi. Peter, thank you very much for joining us on the program. It's my pleasure joining you. Peter, a lot of change and transformation must have happened to those lucky enough to have uh, uh, been taught by you. But what has changed for you since 2019 when you won the Global Teachers Prize? First of all, I want to thank God for the awards and the recognitions. They mean a lot to me. Uh, to my students, to teachers, and to everyone who is working hard. So uh, it's now almost three years, and I can say that much has, uh, has happened uh, in terms of uh, where I am in, uh, in infrastructure like in my school. Uh, we have uh, improvement in, in infrastructure, and I had a chance to travel to different parts of the world but back home here, I can say that it has inspired many people. So uh, that award uh, by the UK-based charity, Vaki Foundation, uh, got you a million dollars prize. And recently, you, wo you won the Commonwealth uh, Prize. Peter, what are you doing with all of this money, if I may ask? OK, to me, it's not just about, about money. I don't want to say that I'm going to put myself at the forefront like I'm the priority. I'm going to put the community, uh, you know, give the first uh, priority. I've already done it with my school in terms of uh, in, in improvement in, in infrastructure. Actually, the things I wanted to do, so many people and friends, organizations and individuals have come forward to assist me. So it's like it's helping me to think of the best way forward, uh, how to uh, use uh, the, the, the funds. But what inspired you to become a science teacher? I became a science teacher because through science, you can learn a lot. You can uh, learn about how the, the, the world around you. It's so interesting. And I think that through science, we can be able to unlock the great potential of our young people. We can be able to come up with innovative and creative ways, you know, to offer solutions to so many challenges that the world is facing. Like here in Africa, there are so many challenges. Unfortunately, you cannot get the solutions unless you sit down to have a creative mind, an innovative mind, you know, a mind that's ready to work with others. What does it take to be a great teacher? You need to be uh, uh, near people. You need to be, do your work well, of course, classroom teaching. But at the same time, you need to go above and beyond. It's not just about, you know, all the time you are in the four-wall classroom. You need to uh, ensure that the students are engaged and learning is interesting. These hands-on activities, you even take them outside the classroom, let them be in the lab, you know, have the experiments, the project, you know, based like what I was doing with the students. You have to integrate technology, that's ICT, and ensure that it's not, you're not working in an isolated environment. So there's the could be a school environment, there is a school administration, there are parents. So you need to work with them. You need to be friendly. You need to let your students to be like they are your great friends. It's not just going to class and just, <laughs> you know, uh, just giving them formulas. So think of ways on how to ensure that you inspire them. Peter, I'd like to thank you very much for speaking with us on Inspire Africa. And congratulations on your latest award. Thanks so much. And that wraps it up on this episode of Inspire Africa. You can see this episode again by going to africanews.com. Do not forget to also follow us on our social media pages. 
which you can find right there on your screen. I am Jerry Fisaya Bambi, and I'm leaving you with some of the images that caught our attention on social media. I'll see you some other time. Taken from the digital creator, Miriam Intiaye, this post showing pictures from eight African countries says, every day is Africa day. London. Budget. We go blow up like Trump.